And now, a man who has never said, okay, people, during a rehearsal, Chad Stanley. I know what you're saying. Chad, what's with the cigar? Well, cigars are very hip right now. They're happening. They're the new thing. They're moving. They're grooving. Bill Cosby likes them. Need I say more? My next guest is why I am smoking this cigar. His baptismal name is John, but we know him and love him as Cigar Boy. It's great to have you on the show. Well, it's very nice. And with a band you. like that backing you up, you can't go wrong. You can't complain about the band. You can't complain about the band. Thank you. Let me allow me. Thank you. There is so much to cover in the world of cigars. First of all, um, yes, I call you Cigar Boy because you know all there is to know about cigars. There are others out there that claim to be Cigar Boy, and I'm not here to play favorites or anything like that. But uh -oh. For our purposes tonight at the Literary Talk Show, you are Cigar Boy. Why, thank you. And um, you have a varied background in cigars. You're smoking a, a massive stogie there. Tell us yes. a little bit something about the world of cigars, it's a hot thing, everyone's doing it. That's thats true, Chad. You, you know, the cigars about a couple of years ago have become a big thing, mainly because of uh, folks in the media, uh, cigar, aficionado, cigar Aficionado magazine came out about three years ago and gave cigars a much more prominent view in people's eyes and made it more than just just the cheap stogie you buy at the drugstore and turn it into more of a status symbol. Now that's one thing I want to make perfectly clear. The cheap stogie in the drugstore is forget about it. Completely I mean that's not a cigar. That's no. a suppository, okay? That's not a cigar. <laughs> if you really want a nice cigar, you have to go to... Oh, well, Cousin Cigar Company, which is in downtown well, Cleveland. Oh, that's a cheap plug. I was going to use a generic <laughs> example of a true cigar store. They haven't paid us anything for that plug, but that's okay. Oh, Maybe well, they'll give me a cigar. They may do. I hope they do. Um, but in essence, you have to go to a cigar store with a humidor. Now, with what nice is humidor. the percentage of humidity that a cigar is, is kept in to be optimum? To be optimum, around 70% humidity generally in around 70 degrees now if you're going to have a little high, you could have a little higher percentage of humidity but then you'd need a lower temperature just to keep any little bugs or anything from there you go it. bugs are a problem problem in all uh bugs facets of life problem. there's a bug right now uh crawling on the floor tobacco uh, beetles aren't quite as large right um the world of cigars again is this was this something that was manipulated by the media? Suddenly, someone rose up and said, hey, cigars are cool, smoke cigars. What happened? It, it's kind of wacky the way everyone's doing them now. Well, mainly, a lot of it can be traced back to the publisher of Cigar Aficionado, Marvin Schenken. That one magazine started the ball rolling? Pretty much so. I mean, for the most part, it had been kind of in the... In the background, you know, it was only only reserved for big fat politicians and old guys. And then, and then when the magazine came out and made it the made yeah, it sexy, glamorous, fun. Exactly. And then the Hollywood bandwagon got onto it. You know, all the celebrities started smoking I mean, cigars. I had, Bruce I Williams. smoked. Chad Stanley, the host of the show, I smoked That's cigars. Right. Arnold Schwarzenegger, I, I, yes. Bruce Willis, people like that. So out on the West Coast and on the East Coast, it's like big, hip thing to do. Okay, so now I know there's a few people out there that are sitting watching this and they're thinking, well, yeah, maybe I'll make my way out to a legitimate cigar store and check out a few fine smokes. Mm -hmm. What 
what is available out there? Oh, Just there, what is available out there? there. Uh, narrow it down to countries, regions, uh, flavors, what okay. have you. I know okay. I'm putting you on the spot, but yes, you are. you're a cigar boy. Oh, well, thank you. No, well, the first thing that people usually will ask about is Cuban cigars. Cuban cigars are still illegal, although there are ways that you can bring them in if you get... Yes. If you happen to be, I don't know, on a cruise ship in the Caribbean near small island nations, there are ways that you can come up with a, a few cigars. Um, but uh, they are still by and large illegal in the United States. There are also cigars available from the Dominican Republic, which is the next largest producer. I believe what I'm smoking right now. What you probably have right now. Yes. Uh, they tend to be milder. They are in the lighter range. Lighter than... Uh, Cuban cigars, as are Jamaican cigars, are in the lighter range. And then after that is uh, the Republic of Honduras, which have fuller bodied cigars, much more akin to the old fashioned Cuban cigars of the olden days. Now, I've seen cigars in all shapes and sizes and in all shades and colors. There's Tell us a little something about that, cigar Well, you boy. know, there's a lot of choices in what people are smoking these days. These are lighter, by the way. There you go. There, there's a lot of choices. Um, the, certainly, there is a size, a shape, a color for anybody's preference. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have anything to do um with the person i mean there are women plenty of women out there who now smoke cigars who don't necessarily stick with those small little feminine supposedly cigars i mean there's some women out there who like a big honk and stogie just and the as reason, much can you share this with the audience sure i'm such a cigar fan that i'm almost chomping at the bit to finish your sentences for you but <laughs> um what is the thing about a big cigar? It's not an ego thing. I mean, we're not trying to... We're not, we're not... It's not a phallic thing. <laughs> Sometimes what a cigar is just a cigar. is the big deal about a big cigar? Well, it's satisfying. Exactly. And the it's flavor. A, the flavor. The just completely satisfying. Good way to end a particularly good meal. So wheat. Good meal. Now, what do they put in these cigars? Well, I'll tell you the one thing that they don't put in cigars is all the sh Can I? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. Go, go. Hey, what the ah! All those additives that they put in cigarettes to keep them burning. I mean, so in essence, what I'm smoking is all natural. All natural. I tall and Mother nature. Complete. Ah! Yes. A lot of people don't know this. Do you know Mother Nature's son? Now, the price, the price of cigars has gone through the roof. Oh, well, yes. It's very difficult with... to find. I, I myself, I am the host of the literary talk show, and yeah, I'll admit it, I make a pretty fair coin. But oh, yes. Even I can't afford some of those prices, and we won't mention the establishments. Oh, no. Uh, so I'm forced to buy seconds, which is uh, outtakes, if you will. What's the deal with the prices here in the world of cigars? Well, you know, it's just like with anything else, the law of supply and demand. When demand goes up and supply goes down, prices rise. That's a little economics 101 for you. But uh, part of it is, too, with the, there's been a lot of hype and a lot of cigars out there that, since it's become popular, they figure, oh, this is a good chance for us to make a lot of money, so we'll inflate the price of cigars while this fad is on. I hate that. I hate that, too, because there's a lot of overpriced stuff out there that do it doesn't need to be that expensive. Okay, let's close our interview right now with your impression of oh. Sydney. Of go Sydney? Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, yes! Sydney is the legendary owner legendary. of Cousins Cigar. I mean, he was owning cigar shops back in the 50s when you can get Cubans legal. When a quarter was a quarter. When a quarter was a quarter. Uh, I uh, Well, it's located all around, but until they pay me some money, I'm not going to tell you where they're at. They're out there. Uh, why don't you do your Sydney impression? My Sydney impression? I really don't. 
Come on, it's easy. Come on, he needs a little encouragement, ladies and gentlemen. Folks in the other room. Don't you want to see Cigar Boy's impression? No, what, no, what are you talking about? No, that's, no, that was it. That was it. I'm Absolutely done. brilliant! Thank you. <laughs> there, I just did it. That was Sydney, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, very good. God bless him, may he live to be 110. I thought he was. <laughs> Oh, well, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. He's 112. I'm sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Cigar Boy. Thank you. And uh, John, this has been a wild night for you. Oh, you, yeah. You wore your lucky cap. You I, got a I won tickets. tickets. I won tickets to Forever Plaid. I, I'm amazed. If folks want to, you know, uh, want to look you up, where can they find you? Where they can find me is right across the street, actually, from for Forever Plaid at Checker Office Products in the Hanna Building. If you need pens and pencils, things like that, oh. and uh, things we're, like we're that. We're videotaping this, sir. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. Well, I want to thank. <laughs> I want to. Oh, there goes the cable access deal. <laughs> Out the window. <laughs> Once again, cigar boy, ladies and gentlemen. And thanks. <laughs> Come on, Chad Stanley. We'll be back after this work at the Literary Cafe. century was a creative home to many expatriate artists. In more recent times, artists have found that the good old USA is the best place to be creative. This is the story of an artist who came to that realization. So hard to tell who's exciting and who's dull. You're lucky I'm still around. I could have had another boy by now But things are changing and getting tough I'm fed up, I've had enough I figured you should know by now So when I see you I'm gonna scream out loud I'm wild, wild for you I'm wild for you That was a teaser Stay tuned to the next Literary Cafe talk show for the first episode of Escape from France. Cable Access 53 is lucky! Joe Mylan Band with a theme from Shaft.
Ladies and gentlemen, the one and the only Joe Mylan Band. Doing the theme from Shaft. Now when you're talking Shaft, when you're talking Shaft, you're talking a lot more than retro 70s funk. You're talking present day Shaft. I'd like to welcome the one and the only ultimate Shaft, David Modell to the stage. Bell. David, let me just say from the outset, uh, as your host, Chad Stanley, the host of the Literary Talk Show, normally I'm quite accommodating, warm, generous, friendly, eager to please with my guests. I am basically a beagle. But I find it difficult to like you, sir. Because <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> through your greed and your insensitivity, you've held a city hostage, you've broken their heart, just to make a few bucks on the oh. side. <laughs> just wait a minute there. <laughs> it was a good business deal. <laughs> You've basically taken a football team that means a lot to this community, and for your own ill-gotten gain, you've moved it to Baltimore under a cloak of darkness. Please uh, explain yourself. Well, like I say, it was a good business deal. Pretty soon I'll be owning the club, and, you know, everything will be fine. <laughs> something that I don't understand. How long has this, de this deal been in the works, David? Well, since the day uh, Michael White wouldn't uh, make a deal with us. <laughs> he wouldn't make the deal with us. Well, you're saying that he wouldn't make a deal with you, but like everyone else in this city, I'm a naive, trusting sort. I believe that there was a moratorium. We oh, were not... Thank you. We were not supposed to try to make a deal with you. Next thing we knew, you shuffle off to Baltimore. Your comments. Well, it's, a, it's a shame. It's a shame that you feel that way. <laughs> the reason being because uh, who wants to play in an old dirty stadium anymore? Ladies and gentlemen, do you hear what he has to say about the heritage of Cleveland? Oh, yes. Let's, let's know. I don't want any buffoonery during this segment. I don't want any funny jokes. I don't want anything of that sort. I'm disgusted by the likes of you, people who look for the <laughs> almighty dollar. You don't care about human beings. You don't care about anyone except yourself. Your only concern is to make a buck and you make me sick. Are you with me? Are you with me, folks? Let me tell you, Chad. <laughs> oh, yes. Let me tell you, people in Cleveland, they're a bunch of suckers. I love them, but they're a bunch of suckers. They think they're going to take this team. <laughs> it's my team now. It's my team. David, I could pursue this interview with you further, but frankly, I don't want to. I'm disgusted by the likes of you. <laughs> and little do you know that I have here tonight the one and the only blood sport champion, the one and only Timothy Heron, <laughs> that shall now approach the stage and forcibly throw you out. <laughs> Timothy Heron, security. <laughs> Maybe I'll hire him for my team. <laughs> All right, sass and impressive, Frank and Frank and Frank Throw this bum out. Character? We don't want him here. You're nothing throw this but a bum out. What are you fits? Stop me out of shape, man. Just shut up a second. What are you I talking totally about? Take off my shirt for the ladies in the crowd. Oh! Yes. <laughs> Show them what a real man looks oh, like. Oh, yes. <laughs> if I were you, David, I'd be concerned. This is a real man. I you got every right on the team. Let's get out of here. Let's throw this bum out. No more, David Modell. Get out. Thanks, Tim. Put her there. Nice job. We'll be right back.
house and... And I've been completely depressed. And then it's been I'm like the lowest depressed. point in my life in January while I'm painting happy blue fluffy clouds. So. Because I want people to see what I do. Nobody goes to the playhouse. <laughs> so Mark's a scenic artist. Yeah. Well, how appropriate. It's important. They should they should come just because think about my new dude. <laughs> March Art Walk. Second Friday in March. I don't even know what the date is. Thing. Here. It's here. It might be fun. Maybe there'll be people here. Get the applause for what really gets applause. Get the applause. Uh -oh. I bring the play to the people. I bring the play to the masses. Big boy, you have to look for pig boy. It's really important. And you'll know what I mean if you come and you can see him. You can see him. Here, here, here. 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 All I want to do is eat and poop. <laughs> Hi, my name is Terry Tufts. Yeah. You know, At the like Literary the Cafe! Oh! Hi, yeah. my name is Terry Tufts. It's here, it might be fun. Really? That's it's a diversion, really. That's all it is. Hi, my name is Terry Tufts. And now, here's the man who's next in line for Channel 5 Late Night News Updates, Chad Stanley. Right now, I've got a very special guest for you. He was on the inaugural literary talk show that we ever did. He's an artist, and he's a, he's a visionary. And most importantly, he's a violent son of a... Tim Harris! Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, wow. Tim? Chad? It's, it's great to have you on the show. I go on record as stating here that you were on our first literary talk show. And uh, apart from the sports professional segment, you are the first guest that we've ever invited back, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> Chad, the reason I'm here, I didn't get paid for the first showing, and I was wondering uh, what happened. Well, that's Linda's department. Linda does the books. Hey. Linda does the books along with her good friend Ilona. So uh, Alona's here, uh, fortunately, well, tonight, and she'll Alona clear up any Alona didn't problems. give me a loan, so we're in trouble. Alona will ah! set you up. Now, when we were last here, you told us all the sad story of Bob Ross, who passed away, sadly, uh, the little trees sadly. guy. Yeah. And uh, you were trying to get that gig. What happened? Well, things fell apart. You know, Bob Rostaman, the Jamaican artist, couldn't make it, and... Uh, we're still struggling. We're still struggling. How are things at the Manly Pad, Tim? They're beastly. Good. Yeah. How's business? Have you sold any art? I've sold one piece in the last year, so I feel myself lucky. 17% of college graduates would punch themselves really hard in the face for $50. Hey, I gotta compliment your backup band. I mean, uh, this is... Oh, I'm sorry, not a backup. A the hell front of a backup. line band. A hell of a backup band. It is band, the probably the greatest band. band that has ever played. Oh, second greatest band that ever played. You mean Cleveland's finest show band? No, I made the all nude male strip review band. <laughs> So tell me something, Tim. Um, you do a lot of portraits of people. Yes. How many? I mean, uh, how many portraits have you ever done? My God, you must have billions quite a portfolio. Billions and billions of portraits, ah! galaxy known wide. Have you ever seen dime one from those portraits? No. <laughs> but a lot of nice craft work has come my way. 
Well, that's that's nice. Now, the last time you were here, you broke a branch of my ficus tree, but I'm happy to say the ficus tree has made a remarkable comeback. Oh, yes! Like the Marcus tree, I'm taking medication too, so I don't think we'll have any more trouble with the tree. Oh, yes! Break the branch. <laughs> I won't hurt the tree. I won't hurt the tree. Okay. The tree is special. It's my friend. Basically, uh, I've covered all the ground that I want to cover with you tonight, and it's a privilege to have you back. So, uh, I've got to take a flight back to California. I'd like to stay longer if I could, Chad, but uh, I've got to go. Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, Timothy Heron is up, up, and, and away. away. Thank you, Tim. Well, wasn't that some great entertainment right off the cuff? Who knows? Beautiful spas. We got a spa. Look at this spa. Look at that. It's half price. Leave the time warehouse. Come on down. Leave the time. For half price. Leave the time warehouse. Leave the time warehouse. Leave the time warehouse. <laughs> Go ahead, give us a call at 221-4066. Once again, it's been our privilege to bring you the Literary Talk Show. I'm Chad Stanley. Behind the camera tonight is Andy. Oh, Behind yeah. the sound machine is the inimitable Kevin. Special K, if you will. And the Joe Milan Band to my left. Absolutely the most brilliant. dangerous band in the land. Until next time, we are the Literary Talk Show. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Nine, seven.